In this video, you and I are going to build the exact wardrobe of James Bond, as described in the original Ian Fleming novels. Although it's the movies that gave 007 his reputation as a style icon, the origins of these ideas are to be found in the books. Now I do warn you, the literary James Bond was not always the best dressed guy in the room, and I'm going to reveal one howling fashion error he made far too often. But there are a lot of interesting details to unpack. And once you have this style knowledge under your belt, you can choose which details to keep and add to your own aesthetic, and which ones you think are best consigned to the history books. So let's start off with the suits. The navy suit is the everyday uniform of James Bond. So much so that he has two navy suits, one in a heavyweight wool and one in a tropical wool. As we go through this video, you will notice there is a big emphasis on function in Bond's wardrobe. As a man who travels around the world at a moment's notice, having two navy suits in two different fabrics was an easy and simple way to always be stylish and prepared whatever climate he found himself in. And the navy suit is still a fantastic style choice for any man. Not only can you wear it in different climates thanks to different fabrics, but these days you can also dress it up or dress it down depending on your shirt and accessories choices. Bond also had a third suit which he wore much less often. This was a black and white dog tooth tweed suit. It was more for the countryside and casual occasions than his everyday duties. And this was described in the novels as being so old and worn that the white had yellowed slightly. So the literary James Bond did not visit the dry cleaners as often as he appears to in the movies. And the fourth and final suit is of course a tuxedo. Bond certainly got more mileage out of this purchase than most men do, and he liked to wear a classic black dinner suit instead of midnight navy or anything more creative. Now we're going to move on to James Bond's shirts, and this is where things get a bit weird. So first off, Bond rotates between classic colours of shirts, white, cream, light blue, and what's described in the book as dark blue. Although given the era and Ian Fleming's knowledge of style, the dark blue was probably more of a mid-blue, like the ones worn by Pierce Brosnan. And the character would have gravitated toward blue shirts to emphasize his piercing blue eyes. So nothing unusual so far. But shockingly, Bond only wears short-sleeved shirts. I did warn you that not all of his style choices were good. Now, I know some of you guys might find this more comfortable, and my dad was one of those guys. But this is a hard style rule. Even in the heat of summer and even then, a long sleeve shirt is always the way to go with a blazer or a sports jacket or a suit. You can always roll up the sleeves like I have now if you get too warm. However, we did see Daniel Craig replicate the literary Bond's appetite for short sleeved shirts with his Bahamas outfit in Casino Royale. I was a little shocked when I saw him take his suit jacket off in this scene, but let me know in the comments if you think he pulled it off. Now we come on to the shoes. If there's one thing you need to know about his taste in shoes, it's that he abhors shoelaces. And he's also staunchly minimalist. For that reason, the go-to pair of shoes for Bond are some black penny loafers or Venetian loafers. Although I am surprised he doesn't worry about them slipping off during moments of intense action. But I do think there is something a little more sophisticated and nonchalant about loafers in the right setting compared to Oxford's. The literary Bond is also very minimalist when it comes to his accessories. He only wears one tie, a black knitted silk tie. You guys know I love knit ties and I think they are very underrated in the mainstream. However, black is definitely not the best choice because it's just too serious and formal for most occasions especially during the daytime with a navy suit. It's definitely not the choice of a man who's putting a lot of consideration into his outfit and colour matching. At the time the Bond novels were written, side adjusters and suspenders were still very popular ways to hold up your pants. And that's what we've seen movie Bonds like Sean Connery and Daniel Craig wear with their suits. But the literary Bond went for the modern option and always wore a black leather dress belt. Now I know what you're thinking, what about Bond's penchant for the Rolex? Does that come from the books? Well, yes, it does. The literary Bond is never seen without his Rolex Oyster Perpetual dive watch. However, he wears his with an expanding metal bracelet much like the one I have on this watch here. You don't see these too often in modern watches, so if you wanted to pay a subtle style tribute to Bond, you could consider adding one of these to your favourite timepiece. Compared to other characters I've looked at, like Tommy Shelby and Gordon Gecko, 
Bond does not have much of an appetite for accessories. No tie bar, no cufflinks, not even a pocket square. So you will understand by now that the idea of minimalism and sheer practicality is the guiding principle behind Bond's style. And to me, he doesn't seem like a man who is particularly bothered about being well-dressed. Although a navy suit, knit tie, and loafers seem stylish by today's standards, it would have been the bare minimum level of effort for a gentleman in his position in the 1950s and 60s. But style has always been a big part of the James Bond character on screen. Even for the first film, Dr. No, a huge amount of the budget was spent on Sean Connery's Turnbull and Asset shirts and Anthony Sinclair suits. Gentlemen, I hope you found this video to be an interesting and refreshing take on Bond's style compared to what you've seen in the movies. Although I think Bond is better dressed on the big screen, certainly more interestingly dressed, I do think it's cool to see where the inspiration came from. Gentlemen, I wanna hear from you in the comments. Have you read any of the James Bond books? If so, do you have a favorite? While I haven't read them all, I am a big fan of these novels and especially Ian Fleming's writing style. In fact, I believe his literary accomplishments have been overshadowed by the movie's successes, although I suppose that's not a bad thing. Now you've learned a bit more about the literary Bond, you might be interested to get some life lessons from the man who turned the character into a world star, Sean Connery. In this video, I take a deep dive into the life of this fascinating Scottish actor. I'll talk about how he found himself into the Bond role, how he transformed himself into the character, and the legacy he left. Sean Connery was not a popular choice with Ian Fleming at first, so it's fascinating to find out how he became one of the most iconic Bonds ever. And I'm sure you gentlemen will enjoy this video a lot. So until the next one, thank you as always for watching, and I look forward to chatting with you in the comments.